Imagine if you and I sat down and did some basketball word association. If I said George Gervin, you'd say finger roll. If I said Tex winner, you'd say triangle. If I said the New York Knicks, you'd say misery. But if I said Kareem, how long would it take for you to say skyhook? No move is more synonymous with a player. It's the very definition of iconic, and rightfully so. Over the years, it's remained peerless and confounding. The skyhook is like a samurai sword, an elegant weapon reserved for a master, and no one before or since has wielded it quite like the enigmatic Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But where did the skyhook come from, and why is it so effective? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a literal and figurative titan in the history of basketball. His NBA career spanned 20 seasons from 1969 to 1989. Six of those were with the Milwaukee Bucks, and his other 14 seasons were played in Los Angeles, donning the purple and gold with the Los Angeles Lakers. Today, the go-to snapshot of his career is old Kareem, showtime Kareem, shaved head, goggles, awkward celebrations, and high fives. Young Kareem was a breathtakingly unique athlete, and we should never fail to appreciate the fact that he was gigantic, towering at seven foot two and long with a seven foot five wingspan. I would say that he was a twitchy, explosive, fly around player, but for his size, he was graceful and agile. He was more in the Rudy Gobert, Chris Stapps Porzingis class of center, and definitely more finesse than force. But regardless of which iteration of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar you are studying, one thing is always going to be present, and that is the skyhook. To be so impactful, Kareem's origin story as a player is somewhat uncomplicated. He was lucky to be in New York City playing high school basketball merely blocks from Madison Square Garden where he'd observe firsthand guys like Bill Russell, the player that he insists was his hero, and he even struck up a friendship with Will Chamberlain and shadowed him for a while. The lineage of the hook shot is murky, but it's difficult to find a time when it wasn't present. The hook shot has always been there. Every, I said every, capital E, every center had a hook shot just as every guard had a two-hand set in the 30s, 40s, and, and even into the 50s for the most part. Still, the hook shot wasn't reserved for the big guys in those early days. Goose Tatum made it a part of his routine in the 1930s. Cliff Hagen mastered it in the 50s. But the hook shot was put on a collision course with a six foot six, 10-year-old named Kareem Abdul-Jabbar by George Mikan. Mike had created the dominant big man template from scratch with help from his college coach at DePaul, Ray Meyer. Meyer saw a behemoth of a player and imagined the possibilities, forcing him to spend hours repetitively shooting left and right-handed hook shots without dribbling the ball in a drill that would go on to haunt the lives of every relatively tall person in youth practices across the world for the next 50 years. It was the Mike and drill. A Long Island College student named George Hedgeduck knew the drill, and one day while helping Kareem's middle school coach in an open gym, he insisted on making the hook shot Kareem's first polished skill. Today, most hook shots are abbreviated versions of this. We call them jump hooks or baby hooks, one-handed shots that are flicked with your shoulders open to the rim, jumping off of two feet and extending the ball as high as you can to float the ball over the defender. Billy McGill often gets credit for fathering that version. The skyhook was lethal because of the various ways Kareem could work his way into it and the various areas of the floor where he could hit it efficiently. Either side, on the baseline, across the middle, he could wheel into it as he got a feel for the defender. But the basics of the move usually went like this. Kareem starts with his back to the defender with a wide stance and both hands on the ball at about his waist. If Kareem isn't moving with the ball when he goes into the shot, he'll often give a push with his right leg, establishing that pivot foot away from the defender. Now he's pushing away, swinging his right leg around and up, and lifting his right arm and leg as if they're on a string. That propulsion from his left leg gets him into the air, and that right arm extension puts the ball well out of reach. That extension, Kareem's release point was very frequently over the damn rim, with that left arm protecting it as it wound upwards, made it nearly impossible to defend even for the longest and most athletic leapers in the world. We only have a few examples of it getting blocked. Hmm, was the skyhook practical? 
Let me ponder that for a moment. We're talking about a guy that won three consecutive national championships and was national player of the year in back-to-back -back seasons at UCLA. And in his 20 seasons in the NBA, he earned six MVPs, he won six championships, five with the Lakers and one with Milwaukee, two finals MVPs that were 14 years apart. He was rookie of the year, he won the scoring title twice, he was first team All-NBA 10 times, appeared in the All-Star game 19 times, and is the reigning scoring leader in the history of the league at a whopping 38,387 career points on 55.9% career shooting. Kareem had a complete game, but he did all of that with the skyhook as his primary means of creating his offense. The discussion around defending the skyhook was full of caveats. I mean, the man didn't wear goggles so that he could see better. It's because people were reaching below the rules of decency to disrupt him. Stopping Kareem was a distant hope, not a box to be checked. Bothering him was about all you could do. What I'd try to do is beat him to the spot and make him start a foot or two outside of his comfort zone. And then I would sit on his left shoulder so that he couldn't step straight across the lane, but would have to step up the lane a little bit. You just tried to make it a little more uncomfortable for him, make him take the shot a little farther away from the basket. That sounds good in theory. It didn't work very well in practice. <laughs> Shooting the occasional skyhook in a game setting? That's possible. Being the foremost scorer in the history of basketball with the skyhook as your primary weapon for 20 years against quality competition and shooting a high percentage? That's a level of mastery that requires several things to fall into place. For a shooting style this unique, it does seem obvious, but it's going to require an immense amount of time, focus, and effort. Kareem's relationship to the work that went into the craft of basketball was like Andy Dufresne's relationship with geology. I think it appealed to his meticulous nature. Zooming out on his career as a whole, it does seem that the challenges within his development played out with an almost symphonic perfection. But the most important challenges came under John Wooden at UCLA. When the NCAA outlawed dunking in 1967, it was clearly aimed at neutralizing him. But for someone as resilient and as disciplined as Kareem, it had the reverse effect. No dunking meant a further reliance on touch, and that only strengthened the monster. His four years at UCLA were the time when the skyhook skyrocketed in its effectiveness and nosedived in its replicability. Wooden called this shot the flat hook and became consumed with helping Kareem refine it. For it to hang around, the move is going to have to evolve, so the two began shaping it like sculptors shaving inches off of an exotic sports car. They first eliminated the need for rhythm steps, which sped the shot up and allowed it to consume less space. Help defenders also had less time to swarm around him. The hook shots of Mikan and Hagen sold out to protect the shooter from the on-ball defender, but they also totally exposed the ball. To aid this, Wooden insisted that Kareem keep his hand, elbow, and knee as close to in line as possible. It made the move sleeker and tighter to his body, and this is where a shift occurred that other players can't seem to replicate. The power generated by the move was now transferred into that left leg propulsion and away from his right arm carrying a lot of the weight. That type of control and extension is the result of rare physical attributes. Kareem's huge hands and seven foot five wingspan allowed him to separate the last two steps. He could step, elevate and extend upwards and then at the apex softly flick it with his wrist hands and fingers he has a very unique body type he has the body type of a scotty pippen or a dr j but who's eight inches ten inches taller to master this particular shot kareem was the right type of person in the right type of environment in the right body and tutored by the right people at some point or another, Kareem has mentored tons of young centers, notably guys like Andrew Bynum, Shaq when he was in college, and even Sean Bradley. And yet on his side of the influence tree, he's oddly disconnected from the basic vocabulary of the big man. You can understand why the sweeping hook shot went away. But how could the most effective move of all time become so novel? Well, for one, allow me to be the 87 bazillionth person to say it, but the game has changed. Post-ups have gradually declined over the past 15 years, and perimeter and post skills are way more homogenized today. Furthermore, young players just flat out don't want to do it. I'd break down a young player's development into three categories. Experimentation, that is just playing, education, and maybe most important, emulation. 
players emulate what inspires them and as the popularity and the marketability of the NBA exploded in the 80s, the emulation for Kareem's signature move just wasn't there in the following generations. Did you ever think about I did, the, you know, when I was, you know, when I was little, I did think about that, but because I'm a I'm a hip hop kid, I wanted to come with something more cool, and that's why I always went with the jump up rather than the little old school sky hook. The sky hook is reminiscent of another era, an uncool time of short shorts with belts, three man weaves, and set shots. It's similar to the idea of shooting underhanded free throws. If something looks lame, players just don't want to do it, even if it's proven to work. The captain has been retired for over 30 years now. And even now, the skyhook towers over any move that can be considered its contemporary. It's arguably the single greatest and most effective maneuver in the history of sports. Even if the move is never fully replicated ever again, in many ways his example should be. Abdul-Jabbar's strength of character and leadership have been integral to the sport even if you totally sat basketball aside. Make no mistake, Kareem was a different dude, but he was also fiercely principled and unbothered by what might be considered popular. Personally, I love the way that strength of individuality shines through in the skyhook. People have tried and tried, but no one could ever quite get to him. Let me know if you agree.